Welcome back to another Geek Watt video and today we're going to be talking about AMD's epic line of server CPUs that they announced around about a week ago now and why it's a much bigger deal than many people uh, seem to be thinking. The first reason that this is a massive massive deal for AMD is that their server market is very much one that's been dominated by Intel for the longest time. Intel currently hold 99% market share uh, over the server area, which gives them a huge monopoly on the market. Now, uh, these server CPUs are bought massively and bought by the likes of Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon, uh, all these huge, huge uh, sites that harvest and use huge, huge amounts of data. Uh, websites, when you go on them, they're all hosted on servers, and servers are essentially what the internet is made up of. It's caused even bigger shockwaves than the likes of Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 releases because of the size of the market and also because of AMD's current standing in the server market. Now, if you look at the desktop CPU and desktop graphics market, AMD already has a decent size market share. Granted, over the six, five, six years of uh, lack of releases on the AMD side, that market share has shrunk significantly, uh, which is what we're now seeing to hopefully grow again with the release of Ryzen 5, 7, eventually Ryzen 3, and Vega, which is expected now around the end of July. So AMD's task with those new CPUs and those new GPUs for the desktop or the consumer side of things, shall we say, uh, is to maintain their current market share, but also improve upon that to increase, obviously, the units of CPUs they sell, their revenue and all ultimately turn a profit. AMD hasn't turned a profit in quite some time now and is harvesting quite a large amount of money. Developing CPUs and GPUs just isn't cheap whatsoever. The server market though is, uh, is completely, completely consumed by Intel. Intel holding 99% market share, which is absolutely ludicrous. It really does show how hard of an industry the CPU market is to get into. You can't just make a CPU with a couple of million quid and be done with it. It really is incredibly, incredibly expensive, incredibly difficult difficult to compete with the likes of AMD and Intel. Now, uh, with AMD, the only place here to go is up. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that their epic line of service CPUs are going to make AMD a crap ton of money, because that would strictly be not true. The development cost for developing CPUs, as I just said, is huge, and AMD do need to gain a significant amount of market share in order to turn a good profit uh, from these new epic line of CPUs. However, it's much, much easier to gain market share when you have zero and are only going against one competitor uh, when you compare that to the GPU market or the CPU market and you already hold uh, that market share. You need to meet the existing needs and expectations of customers and then go above that, provide better value than the competition. Now, another area in which this gets really, really exciting and really interesting is that in the uh, server industry and in companies like Amazon and Google, uh, one of their massive concerns is power consumption and this is an area in which which AMD seems to be steaming ahead. The days of AMD being the new space heater for your living room seem to have gone at this point. Now, unlike when you or me might go shopping for a new CPU for our personal computer, uh, we're really looking at price to performance. How much uh, sort of performance can we get per dollar, per pound, per euro, or wherever you live? Now, with server CPUs, uh, they're running 24 seven. Reliability is absolutely crucial, uh, of course, but also it's energy consumption. People like Google actually have servers in places like Iceland, uh, where they can naturally create energy, which is super, super inexpensive in order to run their server farms. They're hugely energy consuming and hugely, hugely expensive to run. If you can have a CPU that perhaps costs a little bit more but then consumes a lot less power, uh, that's going to give significant cost savings throughout. And now it's not just uh, the fact that there are lower wattage CPUs that they consume less power, it's also to do with heat. A CPU which takes in more power will traditionally give out a bit more heat. Now this is because uh, power, for those of you that don't know, energy has to be converted uh, into other forms. The chances are that the more power a CPU uses, the more more heat is going to get out and the more beefy cooling solution is going to need. Uh, now Google and Amazon Facebook, as I've mentioned previously, uh, who own these massive, huge server data centers, have really, really complex cooling systems to cool the CPUs. Uh, the hotter a CPU is, uh, the worse performance you're going you're gonna to risk getting. You're going to see thermal throttling, you might see a shorter lifespan on the product as well, and making sure that the CPUs are reliable as possible in environments such as Google or Amazon when you constantly reading and writing files, people are visiting your site. Uh, YouTube, for example, a great example, uh, when you upload a video, YouTube then transcodes it, uh, 
basically compresses it. That's all the work of servers on YouTube's back end. Specs wise, these things certainly aren't slouch as these new AMD Epic line of CPUs. You see up to 128 PCI lanes on this platform, which is mind blowing. You have the recent controversy over Intel's new release of their X299 CPUs. Some of the CPUs only having 16 PCI lanes natively on a CPU. And these new Epic line of, the new Epic line of CPUs having 128 PCI lanes take advantage of loads of expansion cards, loads of professional high-end graphics cards, such as the ones we saw from uh, AMD with the launch of their sort of half-launch of Vega, and of course with Intel's Quadro and Tesla line of graphics cards. Now to wrap this video up, I just wanted to give some perspective as to the size of this market. Intel last year with their 99% market share, or monopoly as I call it, uh, reported revenues of $17.2 billion. Now without any context, that's not that useful, aside from the fact it is a huge number. It was actually up 8% year on year. Now, uh, a market that's growing that fast is just an ever-increasing opportunity for companies like AMD to try and take a piece of that pie from Intel. While you build uh, an editing PC that's costing you $1,000, $2,000, that might last you five years. When it comes to the server CPUs, uh, the chances are that the lifespan of those, uh, a server CPU will have been replaced two, at least two times uh, by the time you swap out of that five-year-old system. They run 24-7, and despite uh, really elaborate cooling systems and really really good maintenance, uh, improvements in performance, improvements in power consumption and reliability are much more important factors for these huge data centers uh, than trying to drag that CPU to last three or four years. So hopefully this sort of demonstrated uh, the opportunity that AMD has ahead of them and why really it is a much, much bigger deal than some people seem to be realizing. Yes, uh, we might only be bothered about this new Ryzen 7 CPU that provides a 10% performance increase for the same price over an Intel Core i7, but it's company Companies like Amazon and Google and Facebook who really provide the big books with massive orders all in one go. It's a really exciting time for AMD and it's all looking very, very good indeed. I'll have coverage of Vega hopefully whenever that comes, expect at the end of July, although I haven't actually had any official word with anyone about that yet, but also another very, very exciting release that should be coming pretty soon in the, the grand scheme of things from AMD. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and do subscribe, but as always, we'll see you in the next Geek Up video. Thank <laughs> you.